Good evening, everybody. Welcome in the slot, a hockey show breaking down everything NHSL. Eric Ballnar here, and we're joined with a few marquee players that have obviously been big contributors to their team, all leading a stat category in some way. We got Steve Best from the Brewers, Joey McDougal from the Extreme, and Jake Riley from the Stars. Boys, thanks for coming on the show. It's been probably too long to, to, to have you on at this point. It's been a little while. I think the last one we did was the first one. Yeah, when we you were wearing the sunglasses yeah. on the ice. <laughs> a little bit more showy that night. A little bit more showy this time. Jake, thanks yeah. for dressing up. Yeah, no worries. Um, I mean, I try to impress when I can, but <laughs> obviously it's well suited for the weather today. So <laughs> Perfect. Now, boys, thanks for coming in. Look, let's jump pretty much right into it. Probably the question on everyone's mind watching this is what on earth happened on Friday night? If you missed it, let's shoot to the recap right away. We'll do our little TSN, da na na da na na Jay and Dan, what's going on? Uh, early on, it was a pretty good start for the Stars. Actually, a very good start. They scored early, made it one nothing. Yoan Levesque gets a hat trick, makes it 5 nothing, and then he adds another one. Makes it his fourth goal. It's a 7 nothing lead for the Stars. The game is over. Jeremy Klein gets one. At least it's going to look nice on the scoreboard for the Brewers. They score three more and then shorthanded. Zach Boyle makes it 7-5. to five, And then he later slides one through the pads to make it 7-7. Seven, seven. This game went to overtime. Steve, this was a nice one. That's okay. Makes it 1-1. One, one. And then this one pretty much iced it. Tyler Leeming makes it in a must-score situation for Daniel Chen. Beats Matus, not the post. And it is a 8-7 final in uh, a couple extra bonus highlights for you but 8-7 final in a shootout a seven goal comeback now to, I was trying to do some googling here biggest comeback in NHL history five goals biggest comeback in KHL six goals in the Canadian major junior six goals in Olympics five goals so seven goal comebacks just don't happen Steve what was the reaction in the dressing room after the game uh, it's kind of like obviously you're happy to win coming back from 7-0, but it's also a little bittersweet being down 7-0 uh, in, uh, in that stage of the game as well. But uh, mixed emotions, I guess. Don't really know how to explain it. So what was your reaction when it was 10 minutes to go in the second period and the scoreboard said stars 7, Brewers 0? What was, what was happening on that bench? Oh, I think everyone's just frustrated, you know? Like, everyone's kind of... Uh, just didn't know what to do. We're just like, okay, what do we do? Like, do we, do we change something up? We gotta do something. Get that first goal and then we're kind of like, all right, let's just, let's just build off that. Let's just go one by one by one by one and then hopefully get there. And we did. Jake, 10 minutes to go in the second period. Scoreboard said seven nothing stars. What was the vibe on the bench there? Uh, all the boys were pretty G'd up. Um, we were putting in the hard work uh, early in the game, obviously. Uh, and uh, when you get to that like high scoring kind of mark, it's kind of like you think, do you switch from staying like foot down on the pedal going offense only or you kind of play it safe and try try working your D, D systems or something like that. And I don't know, it's, as soon as the goal started rolling in, we were trying our best to just kind of hold it together. But um, there's not much you can really really uh, do in terms of like emotional status. If, if they score, they score. We just keep playing. It's a very long game. Um, but having that seven goal, seven goal lead, no one really thinks like you can blow this. So whether that played a role in getting those seven goals back on us, I'm not sure. But um, yeah, it's, it's something that obviously, like you said, you did your research. It doesn't happen. You, you don't see it happen. So. To be involved in a game like this, first time for me. Um, but I don't know. Getting getting seven goals for for both teams was was good. Yeah, I mean, two halves of the game, right? Like yeah. domination from one team in the first half and capitulation for the first team for in both halves. It was domination for one and capitulation for the other. It was kind of balanced. It just got decided, which is probably fitting. It decided in a shootout. Yeah, yeah. So um, yeah, definitely good job on offense for one half of the game for both teams, I could say. Um, but no, uh, uh, in terms of the stars, um, we're, not, we're not gonna really dwell on it too much. Um, looking forward to the next games where we're still in a playoff position, so we're gonna work towards that and you know, we'll 
humbly take the loss. Um, it was a f well fought game, so um, we just got to you know plan forward to the to the next games and finalize a spot in the playoffs. What do you even say in after a game when the stars walk off the ice after that happened? Uh, it's kind of it kind of takes a bit of breath away from from everyone. You know, everyone's a bit speechless at at, at times, but it's about you know, kind of keeping keeping your, the rest of your team up there. Like, you don't want to see anyone with their head down. So, if you see someone kind of struggling with it, you know, you help help them cope through it. Um, that's where like the leadership kind of shines through. You get your senior guys or even um, some of the younger guys with good leadership skills. They they step in and kind of look out for each other. The game's finished. You can't you can't change what happened. We can change what we do in practice. We can change what we do next game. So that's what we're gonna do. Joey, how do you see the game? Um, I, <laughs> I mean, it didn't look pretty, but I, I mean, there's good things to come out of it for both sides. Um, you've got you know the Stars who put up seven goals halfway through a game, so that's good offensively for them. They know they can produce points. But then you've got a team like the Brewers who. Um, I think everybody's realized now that they're a team that doesn't go away. They're not going <laughs> to stop until the last A little annoying the last if you're playing against them. Goes. Yeah, definitely can be annoying. But, I mean, they did a great job of sticking together and just, like Steve said earlier, just pumping them out one by one. It's like that's all you can do. You just got to climb the ladder one rung at a time. Um, but I think you can tell by both of their answers to what they thought of the game is that nobody is impressed with a win in that situation. Like, you don't want it to be... You don't want to be up and lose that lead, and you don't want to be down and have to claw your way back. So, probably still lots that they can uh, can work on from that one. We were talking, Steve, a little bit after that game, and kind of like you're saying, like one goal at a time. And we were kind of agreeing that you never really hope that you're out of a game. You always have a bit of hope in you when you're playing a game. Otherwise, why you even lace them up? Yeah. But when did hope turn to belief for the Brewers, or for you at least? In, um, in there? Yeah, so for me, I think it was that uh, shorthanded goal from Zach. But that, that play started with a massive save from Matus. I think he, he robbed Johan and uh, just, we use the momentum from that. Zach just got the puck and you see him steamrolling down. You're like, okay, if he scores here, like we're, we're on. We've like, got the clip. Let's actually bring that up because this was actually like we, we, we banked it in case he did say <laughs> that answer there because that was a wild save. And it actually starts with a shot in from the point. Just like yeah. walk us through what's going on here because... Yeah, Johan was absolutely robbed. He had four goals in that game. He was on fire. Uh, but when a goalie makes a save like this, like what does it do for the bench, for anybody? Um, oh, you, you just see Matus just diving. Like, like putting, pretty much doing whatever he can to keep the team in the game. And, and from there, you're just like, okay, if he's, if he's doing everything he can, like, you know, we, we got to step up. We, we can't just let one guy take the reins like this, especially the goalkeeper, you know? Um, and I think, I think Zach's just seen it. He's seen the opportunity. He's like, oh, I'm taking this. I'm, I'm going to take the game on my stick and get the boys amped up. It was, it was such a good move as well. Such a <laughs> nice, simple move. Made him fall for it, but yeah. From the, cause from the, uh, from the Stars' perspective, they score that, it's probably over if they score on that power play, like four goals and the last, well, we say that we're talking about a seven goal <laughs> comeback. But they probably have a four goal lead, eight minutes to go. It probably does a bit momentum for them and it probably yeah. deflates you guys just a little bit. Yeah, that, I, think, I think the main thing for us was keeping that momentum from that first goal and slowly building on it. And any little dent in that would have been probably catastrophic to be honest. But um, yeah, lucky for Matusi, I think he knew that. And he, he just stepped up close the gate and let us do the, do the work. Joey, this one's more for you here because Yoan's not here, so we can't ask him this question, but we can relate it back to you here because Yoan in that game had four goals, didn't, four goals and obviously they didn't get the win. You, the last time you played the Brewers, you had two goals, two assists in a massive game versus the Brewers, but you lost 7-6. What do you feel as a player, what were you feeling when you played the Brewers and you had a great individual game, but you didn't get the win? What's your emotions after the game? Oh, I it just it doesn't even register after the game it doesn't matter like the only thing you think of is oh, if I could have just had that one more maybe it would have done it but at the end of the game if they've got one more goal than you do your points don't matter because it may as well be five nothing if you don't get the win so the one goal doesn't really doesn't do anything the, the two point or I had or four points or 
the six to ten that Johan could have had. Like it's it just doesn't matter anymore because you don't get the win on the board. The only points are those two. Exactly. For the team. Exactly. But it's still a very close competition. Let's take a look at the standings because despite all this all, the Stars still on four points. They're still two points back of a spot. The Brewers and the Extreme are all tied. Uh, if the Brewers win on the weekend, they'll go to first place. They'll move ahead at uh, eight to six. They'll also have the head-to-head -head over the Extreme. If the Extreme win, well then the Brewers are, are, are still opening that door for the Stars to, to come back. The Stars have those two points that they've lost in overtime. Crazy stat for you. The Brewers have not led the Stars for one second of play this season. Not one second, but they've got two wins versus them. So that is unbelievable math for you. It's a wildly close competition. And those Brewers, man, Steve, they just don't go away, do they? It's just annoying. I think we're just all <laughs> pests, you know? Like, we, we got quite a bit of depth and uh, guys that can put the puck away that you don't really expect, you know? Um, you, know, you got guys like Tom Sack, Ben Hamburg, you know, you expect those guys to put the puck away, but then you got guys like Jeremy Klein or Reggie Matros, you know, they're, they're, they're going to put the puck away as well, and you're kind of like, okay, who do I cover here? I'm assuming from other teams, you're like, I don't know who to cover, I don't know who's going to score the goal kind of thing, so I think that's why we're so dangerous. Anytime the Brewers play, there seems to be chaos, whether it be that first game that was the overtime win or yeah. the 7-6 game versus the Extreme or now a seven-goal comeback. Joey... The Extreme like to play a very controlled style of game, and things were not in control the last time you played the Brewers. You get to go up against them this, this week. Uh, what's the vibe of, this, of, of the Extreme heading into this game based on how you played last time versus the Brewers? I think it's just an overall cohesion with the team. Like we, just, we need to play a little bit tighter together, and um, I think Steve would agree with this as well. It was kind of a game of the goalies the last time we played. It was who was going to make the bigger stops to keep their team, um, I guess, in the game a little bit more. And I think Matus and Jeremy both kind of did a good job coming back off some, some shoddy goals, <laughs> we could say. Um, but yeah, I really just think it's, it's going to come down to realizing if you know, your goalie's struggling a little bit, then you've got to shift your game to a little bit more of a defensive side um, and try and keep those shots off until they kind of get the... I guess their game back and they're able to play a little bit uh, a little bit higher. And how are you feeling? Are you going to be back in the lineup? Obviously you had a rib injury. Are you going to be back in the lineup this Friday? Yeah, I'm hoping to be. I'll, I'll see how we go at training on uh, Wednesday night. They'll play, uh, well, it'll be a bit of contact for me for the first time. And I mean, I've been doing workouts. I've been going for runs and doing things here and there. And it's been, uh, been fine. So there hasn't been any issues since the, uh, the original. So how's the layoff been, I guess? You had uh, a Christmas break and you were injured. Uh, the extreme have had a few things go on behind the scenes as well. Like what, I, before I ask you that, boys, how are you the legs feeling after a Christmas break, after there was some ins and outs, some injuries, some time off over Christmas? What were the legs like on the first game back? Heavy. Heavy? Yeah. Same for you, Jay? Yeah, a bit, bit heavy on me. Um, Coming out of COVID as well, I uh, had like that whole almost two weeks off. So, but um, no, it was all right. Um, you you only really feel it towards the end of the game, so it's probably why we we pumped up so much like at the start and then kind of fizzled out at the end. Would you be expecting the same from the extreme? Like it might be conditioning is going to come into question again at the start of this this game. Yeah, I think it it definitely is and it's one of those things where it's almost with the amount of time we had off it's kind of like going into the first game of the season again where you're not really sure what to expect you kind of got to rebuild from where you you left off but um, I mean our guys have been doing a good job with our team trainings we kept them up over the holidays uh, a lot of guys doing individual stuff on the side and trying to stay in shape so um, yeah I think it's just going to be how long into the first period is it going to take us to get our legs back under us again? And hopefully it doesn't last a full game. And how would you assess your game right now? Um, hard to say because I've only really <laughs> been on the ice uh, twice since, the, since I missed the last game. So, so who knows? <laughs> yeah, we'll see what happens. But the last time I was on the ice with the team, everything felt really good. was feeling pretty comfortable and just try and step back on the ice in the same spot I got off. And so what's your hockey background and like how'd you get back into it when you were in Australia? Well, my hockey background, I guess, is... Wasn't Canadian. A, well, yeah, <laughs> it wasn't a lot coming, uh, coming over here. I just kind of played in, the, in a couple of pickup leagues uh, in the summer and over the winter and just more for the fun of it and 
I guess that's all I've ever really played for. I'd never put too much pressure on myself to be the best in shape guy. Just go out, have fun, and wanted to do that as long as I can. And obviously, I'm going to play at the highest level I can for as long as I can. And when I feel like I can't do that anymore, then I'll step down. How many times, I guess, like, let's, maybe, maybe it's a bit different when you were a little kid growing up, but it's a different system in Canada than it is Australia, obviously. When was the last time, because now you're like the leading scorer, one of the leading scorers on the Tigers, um, play with the adrenaline, you were a marquee player, like you are the guy that people call on. You're a captain of one of the NHSL teams here. When was the last time you were the guy on a hockey team? Like Joey McDougal's the man, he's the guy we're going for here. Uh, I would be back in 2010, maybe 2011. I was a captain of our local junior B team. Um, and I played with them for the whole season. It was the last season I had in the league um, as an overager. Um, so a decade and, ago. Yeah, and that was the last, the last time I guess I was something significant on the team. <laughs> or, I guess maybe the better way to say it is I, I was in a, on a team that actually kind of needs guys like that to step up in, in certain times and kind of be a, a leader or role model for some of the younger guys. And did you think you'd get that opportunity again? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I never did. I just I came over here, was asked to play some hockey, and was just happy to be part of the team. But it's one of those things where whether I'm a captain or not, like I'm I'm always vocal in the dressing room, and I always try and lead by example of the way that I play the game. And I would never expect anything to do something that I wouldn't do myself. So all of you guys are guys, the guys that you know. Obviously, a team chose you because they wanted to build a team around you. So I'm curious, we'll start with Jake and we'll work our way down. How does the conversation happen to even become a marquee player in the NHSL? Uh, for me, honestly, I, I was pretty clueless the whole time. <laughs> I wasn't taking any hints from the uh, Premier League season. Um, so when I got a message, I actually got a message from Tash first asking if I, if I knew about it and I was like, I don't know. <laughs> and then, uh, I got a message from Sammy, so Sammy's obviously coached me since pretty much I started and straight away I was like, it's obvious, yeah, I'll play for Sammy. I, at the time I thought it was Sammy and Tash, I had no idea what was going on, but um, yeah, it was just whatever Sammy approaches, approaches me with, I'm kind of like, yep, I'll take it, yeah. So that's kind of how it went down, it was just a message from Sammy and I was like, yeah, I'm in. <laughs> Can you tell, us, tell me a bit more about your relationship with Sammy. Obviously, it's a very close one. Yeah, so um, uh, I can't even remember how old I was. Maybe like seven or something. Seven when you were eight. introducing the, the Chens to Sammy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, Andrew, if you're watching this, I know you are watching this. It doesn't matter if you put your skates on first or your shin pads. You got professionals doing both, so. <laughs> okay, but now going back. Um, I can't even remember how I met Sammy. He's, he came here um, for study and then eventually played Adrenaline and started running some, some trainings or coming out to help with trainings. And then I was just like a magnet to him and he kind of just brought me up. I was training with him like every week, sometimes almost every day. And uh, still to this day, um, our relationship's like, like it was back then. He's kind of like the, my, my mentor of this place and almost like a father figure around here. So um, yeah, we go, we go back a while and he helps me, not just on the ice, obviously he helps me off the ice and helps me a lot with my, my leadership roles and stuff and trying to carry myself more as a professional off the ice. I don't think anyone was that surprised when you paired up with Sammy in the NHSL, so yeah. that probably adds up. Joey, what about you? How did you become a marquee player? Um, well, it was kind of the same thing. Tash uh, reached out to me before anybody else, and uh, I also had uh, Sammy reach out and Bill Newbound. Um, so I guess I was kind of lucky in that sense that I did have a pick, but um, Tash was really convincing, and I know from coaching her at the rush level. Um, I just know how dedicated she is to whatever it is that she's doing. Like it's not 90%, 100%, it's like 110%. So I knew that we'd be in good hands with her as a GM. And whenever she mentioned that uh, 
Eric Lean was on the call sheet to be the, the coach, I kind of said, you know, if, if you can lock Eric Lean in, I'd like to be able to play under him because I've heard some good things and I know he's got the experience. So that was kind of the, the thing for me. And whenever she rang me up and kind of said, you know, we got Eric, he's interested. I just said, yeah, well, I'm, I'm on board as well. Has Tash lived up to expectations that you had on that phone call? Uh, you know Tash as well as I do, and we both know that she's exceeded expectations, as she always does in anything. Um, I mean, we're, from the beginning, we had uh, a gym lined up that was doing all of our off-ice trainings. We've, we've had uh, workout programs for off-ice that we get every week. Um, Sean and Steve from Peak Conditioning and you know they come in and they do our pre-game warm-ups with us and like they've bought into it just as much as anybody on the team. Um, even with around the rink like she's always on top of everything making sure everybody's got what they need. She's on the ice sometimes. She's even <laughs> on the ice sometimes. She, she's come out to trainings where we needed a few more players so um, yeah definitely exceeded expectations. How about you, Steve? How'd that, how'd that conversation line up with, uh, obviously, a friend for a long time and Bill Newbound too? Yeah, yeah, so uh, I think after there was a big GM meeting, like when the league got established, uh, I think Billy just said straight away, he sent me a message saying, hey, this is, this is what's up, you wanna, you went in? I'm like, yeah, I'm in. Like, uh, I've, I've played with him for, I don't know how many years in the wings. I think I've been, I've been, in, I've been there for over 10 years. Um, I've been with the Red Wings when they were you know, losing every game and when he came into the, to the team, started building the team, I knew that you know, we're, we're, we won like what, four championships in the last six years or something like that, seven years. Uh, he builds us up to where we are now, so I knew that if I'm going to be in a new league with a guy that has to build a team, he's, he's definitely the guy to go to. So. And how would you assess uh, your own game first and then where the Brewers are at as a whole? My game first. We'll go with your first. We'll go with your game first, yeah. Uh, I don't really know how I'd, I'd say my game is. Uh, I like to share the puck around a bit, I guess. Uh, I like to, to bring guys up around me. I like to play with like, players that know the game, can adapt well, like guys like Tom and Ben. Uh, I think they're, they're amazing to play with. So I think building a team around those guys was, was good. Um, having a strong defensive uh, marquee player, and Zach Boyle, who's, yeah, I think he's probably one of our most effective forwards at the moment. Six goals. <laughs> yeah. he's, he's got the most goals for our team at the moment. So um, yeah, he's, uh, hees unreal. Um, and yeah, yeah, I don't really know where to go from there, I guess. What's the we, big thing that you expect that, yeah, there's you uh, sticking yeah. up there. You're even dropping the gloves this year, Steve. Yeah, well, uh, I guess, you know, you get a young goalkeeper. I, I kind of took exception to, to Zachy kind of hitting him in overtime. Um, didn't end too well for me in the end, but it wasn't, uh, yeah, it wasn't, wasn't too bad. I'm not. Not too bad about that, so yeah. How'd you get into ice hockey? Uh, well, I was originally an inliner. I play, started inline when I was about six or seven. Um, and then when I was about 13, 14, I had a friend called Andy Scott who always played ice and he's one of the best ice players for his age. Uh, he, he told me to come across and say, hey, like try this out, I think you'd, you'd be all right. And I just, yeah, took to it. I think, I think my, uh, my parents and my grandparents were like, yeah, I think you should play ice over inline a, a bit more. They, I think they enjoyed watching it way more, so. <laughs> Yeah, they, they didn't push me to do it. They, they'd be happy with whatever I do. But um, yeah, they were definitely excited that I was starting to play ice. And how old were you when you made that kind of, well, you, I know you play both, but made, made the switch to ice? Yeah, um, well, I was 14 initially when I, when I yeah. made the switch. Um, but I didn't really start taking it too seriously until I was about 16, 17, when I thought, oh, I can I'm kind of get, you know, I've got more opportunities in ice and in line here, so you know, I'll stick with it and put a bit more effort into it. And how do you think your game has changed over the last couple years? We'll just even start there. Uh, or has it? I, th I think it has. Uh, just in this, I think I'm a bit of a tougher player than I used to be. You know, you ask, ask players who used to play with me you know, four, five, six years ago. I was called Greg Audy. <laughs> yeah, Greg Audy, uh, Sharbs, uh, uh, Huxley, and all those guys had. I'd say I definitely wasn't the toughest player out there, you know, I'd kind of shy away from a bit, but, uh, but yeah, I feel like I've, I've kind of, whatever barrier I had there, I kind of, not completely overcome it, you know, I, I could definitely be a bit tougher, but yeah, it's, I, I feel like I'm way better in that area than I uh, ever have been. What about you boys? You've played against Steve for, uh, you've played with him or against him now for what, three, four years, both of you, or Jake bit a bit longer. Has his game changed? Yeah, um, I think biggest thing you can see is, uh, 
goes in the corners a bit more now. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, no, definitely the, the physical the physical game. You can see it step up a lot um, year by year. And also, obviously, the hands, they get better year by year. Still can't believe it. But um, <laughs> no, it's, it's good seeing, seeing Steve. I, I, I used to watch him like when I was much younger and he had the, the big hair. And then I grew into the big hair and kind of... I was like kind of idolizing Steve with the with the hands and the big hair, obviously. <laughs> but yeah, it was really fun to watch growing up. Yeah, and I think uh, the biggest shift I saw was definitely in the Prem season when he was with the Red Wings, and they lost two or three of their key guys out of the lineup. And oh, it was five or six at times. Yeah, they, they lost quite a few, but Steve did a really good job of like putting the team on his back and stepping up his game to try and fill those holes a little bit better. So it's uh, definitely something that I've seen from him. It'd be nice to, to see it a little bit more because I think he's got it in him. But uh, yeah, and I, since I've been here, I've kind of known him as a bit of a physical player. So I guess I hadn't seen that side of him earlier on. Like you guys are going, you guys had some epic battles, Tigers, Red Wings this year. You had some, you've already had a couple epic battles, Brewers, Extreme. Do you guys like, I mean, I know you're friends off the ice too, but do you guys like going head to head against each other with your styles of play? I think it's fun. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, li I like it. Yeah. Like when you're out there, like no, no one's really friends out there. You know? yeah. you, we're, we're there to win. We have a job to do. So you know, if we get in each other's way, it happens. You know, I think, I think we've come face to face a couple of times. And yeah. Yeah, I think Steve would be the first to tell you that I don't like him on the ice. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't like anybody on the ice. Yeah, we can tell. Yeah. A dog. Yeah. <laughs> As you always And not say, a nice yeah, one. A dog, yeah. Uh, Jake, what about you? How, do, how are you assessing your game right now in, in the NHSL? Um, let's see. Uh, I'm trying to do what I can to involve, um, say, the new, the new, not new players, um, on our team, but like players I haven't really played with before. So say like Ryan Fall or even Johan, um, it's kind of, it's a short season. So it's about like trying to adapt as quick as you can. So um, assessing my game, I'm just trying to adapt as quick as I can to playing with anyone or playing against new, new people. And I'd say, um, phys Physically, um, it's, a, it's a lot different to, uh, say, obviously Premier League and it's getting close to that AI kind of physical presence out there. So kind of switching back to that, um, that different style of play uh, it gets me thinking a bit differently because I can't go, can't play the same way I would in Premier League and just skate end to end and, you know, not take a heavy hit or something. So. Uh, because it's a short season, you, you try to adapt quick and also at the same time when I'm playing against big dogs like, like Joey out there, <laughs> I gotta try do what I can to you know, not go through his, his, uh, his path and you know, potentially miss a game if he hits me too hard and I take an injury or something. So you gotta, I, I gotta play it safe out there um, and also obviously try to produce as much as I can, whether it's scoring or getting assists. But um, yeah, I think in the moment, it's, well, I'm trying to, trying to gel the best with, with Johan. He's, he's putting the high numbers out there and, you know, I envy him. He, it, it doesn't come by, by luck at all. He's like by far the hardest worker, I think, in this, in this league. And, you know, his effort speaks, speaks words. And where do you think the, the stars right now can, what are you guys going to be focusing on to try to get a little bit better to try to flick those close margins to close wins? Uh, it, it starts, I would say for us, it starts off the ice, you know, getting, getting that team bonding more, getting our team to bond more is um, it's going to help us in those deeper ends of the game where we got to really dig deep and either get gritty and we know like as a as a good team together if you're if you're there for someone else you know someone else is there for you you want to play your heart out if you know someone's someone's got your back or um if if say you're, you're down or something and you you really need to dig deep you you can rely on your on your guys or um you can you can push push your other guys to dig that little bit extra and what do you think that you can do 
uh, to, to help that situation a bit more, just as Jake Riley? Yeah, so I, I, what I can bring, uh, like obviously my experience from overseas and stuff, and I, um, I'm not one of the senior players, obviously, but uh, I can bring my, my work ethic towards, towards the other players and kind of lead by example, both on the ice and off, where it's if I'm playing my heart out, battling against guys twice my size or something, you know, everyone feeds off that energy. So you got one high, high energy player, you get another player feeding off that, and then it just goes all the way down the line, and then you have the whole team just feeding off that high energy. Has it been a challenge adjusting? I mean, obviously you're only 21? Yeah, 21. Yeah, 21, you got an A on your chest here, so you're a leader, you're a marquee player. Joey's, you know, he's got a couple decades of hockey experience. Steve's been now a leader for, what, five, six, seven years in the ice hockey. Is, are you finding it a challenge to now being like, okay, Jake, now you have to be the leader. You're not just thrown into the throngs as a young kid on a team. Yeah, it's definitely a challenge. It's, um, I wouldn't say it's, it's easy being a young player and trying to lead guys close to twice my age. Um, there, there's always challenges around it, but it's also, it's, it's good development. Like uh, being, being an assistant, assistant captain, obviously having that leadership role, I do what I can both on the ice and off. Um, but also try to learn as much as I can from the senior players. So I'm always trying to talk either um, face to face or kind of message some of the older guys and just get a feel for what um, the kind of environment is um, with, the, with the older players. Because le yeah, leading, leading guys around my age, pretty, pretty fine because I've grown up with them. But it's definitely a challenge when you try to lead someone that's generations before you and they have a lot more experience um, so I kind of just try to take in what they can offer and just feed it back um, with my little twist to it I guess. Do you boys find that harder like when you were were you guys ever in like a leadership role where you had to lead people like Jake saying like 10-15 years older than you were and you were 20 years old? Uh, I've never been no so generally any team I've played for the captain is usually one of the veteran guys and I mean with my age now I'm I am one of the veteran guys on our team there's a couple guys older but um, I think we also have guys like uh, Nat Benson who's uh, an alternate captain on the team as well so you know he's he's been good at speaking up when at times and I think it's it's one of those things like Jake said it is tough when you're a younger guy and trying to you know get through to these guys who have more experience than you do but it doesn't mean that what they're saying has any less worth. It's still the same message that would come from me or any of the other guys in that position. All right, fellas, uh, we got to wrap things up here. Let's quickly take a look at the stat leaders uh, heading into the absolute final, or the final thing we'll do in this show, heading into Friday's games. Uh, Yoan, Le well, it's a couple spelling, Le 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 we'll call him Lavesque now, either way. Joey Quebec, uh, he's got seven goals, five assists, 12 points leading into the game. Steve Best and Jake Riley sitting right behind him, trying to catch up there. Uh, Joey McDougal, he's played less games than everybody. He's still on five points, cracking in the top 10. Got a couple more games. It should be a fun one to watch. It was high scoring last time, Brewers Extreme. Uh, boys, uh, what, are we looking forward to the game? What can, what can a fan expect if they're coming to the game the first time on Friday night? Uh, I think it's gonna be a good game, I guess. Like, it's, it's, gonna, <laughs> it's gonna be, it's gonna be uh, physical. We're, we're fighting for, pretty much top spot here. So every, I think everyone's gonna put everything on the line. It's gonna be, yeah. Yeah, well, we're trying to keep our top spot and we definitely kind of don't want a, re, a rematch of the last time where we lost, but also we don't want to repeat last week's game either and have, have to come back by seven goals or go up by seven and, and lose that lead. Well, boys, I appreciate you guys taking some time, especially before training this week, to really uh, come down and give us some insight about what goes on as a marquee player with an NHSL team. Friday night, it's Steve's Brewers versus Joey's Extreme. Should be a really fun one. You can join me for the call on Friday night, or even better yet, head to nhsl.com.au slash tickets or something along that line and get your tickets and come out to the game and support everybody we'll be watching. So until then, we'll see you on Friday.